Now let's look at another kind of loop. Although the while loop is a very good and basic loop that we can use in a wide variety of situations, the loop is such a common procedure within programming that there's been another very commonly used structure created to make the process of putting a loop together very easy and very clear to understand exactly what's happening. What we can use is a for loop. And a for loop is a very concise way of expressing several different elements within the part of the program where we set up the parameters for the loop. It's kind of an all-in-one. The basic structure is very similar to that of a while loop. This condition is checked first before the statement block is carried out. But instead of just putting a condition inside the brackets, we put in a small piece of code to initialize a variable. Then we put in something that will check to see whether we should carry out the block, very similar to the only thing we put as the argument to the while statement. And finally, we put in a small statement at the end which is what we're going to do each time the block is repeated. So let's have a look at our text editor and see what a for loop like, like in Perl. Instead of having to set up the variable before we start our loop, we can actually set it up within our for loop here as the starting statement that the for loop takes. Then we give our condition. And finally, the last of the three statements is the iterative statement in this case. That's what happens every time we complete a block and we're going to move on to the next one. All we're going to do within our block is just to print out the number that we've reached. If we move over to our command line and test, we'll see that this for loop does a very similar thing to what we're able to do with the while loop. However, it's easier to see at a glance exactly what this for loop is doing once you get used to the syntax of for loops. That's because everything is contained in this line. The initialization, then the condition that has to be met for the block to be repeated, and then what happens every time we iterate over the loop. All of these statements could be pretty much whatever we like. It's very important, though, to include, once again, something that will have an effect on the condition over here. For instance, if we change this to reducing the number of i by 1 rather than increasing it, and then try to run our loop, we would be getting very quickly into high negative numbers and there will be no prospect of ever escaping from this loop, unless, of course, we break out of the program. So we need to be sure that what we're doing makes sense within the context of our loop. Of course, each of these arguments is actually optional. We could, for instance, use our for loop simply as an infinite loop by default and only put in those statements that we want to use. For instance, just the condition. In this case, we're using our for loop exactly like a while loop. You'll notice that these semicolons here surround the places where the initialization statement and the iterative statement should go. But there's nothing wrong with the syntax. It's just a clumsy way of using a for loop, and we may as well have used a while loop. What we want to avoid is a situation where either there's no condition at all, or where the condition will never be affected by the parameters that we're setting up for the government of our for loop.